what's been exciting in the research, um, the most recent research in the area of autism, has been in treatments that are emerging that help individuals with autism begin to engage in just very basic social interactions. And the most basic component of a social interaction is actually reading someone's nonverbal cues, having eye contact with them, and um, being able to read their emotions. Well, what we know about autism is even just their gaze uh, at another individual when they're communicating with them is uh, different than a typically developing child. So they may gaze more at a mouth when there's a conversation or an interaction as opposed to the eyes. And the eyes have an amazing amount of emotional information. And so by not focusing on the eyes, they're missing many social cues. So we've actually had um, research here at the Institute that's beginning to look at ways in which we can get children and individuals, um, adults with autism, to um, engage in tasks that ultimately may be used for remediation or intervention and reading facial cues. And all we're doing is simply having them look and detect um, little flashes of light in a picture of a person's face, either in their eyes or their mouth. So what this is going to do is bring their attention up from the mouth to the eyes. And again, because the eyes have so much emotional information, and we know this from years of research, this is going to be a very basic component that we think could ultimately help with interventions. Um, and psychiatry in general, biological psychiatry, has been based so much on psychopharmacology and not as much on interventions and understanding or developing interventions based on what we know about the biology of a disorder. I think in the case of autism, it's not really um, medications that are helping these children as much as learning interventions, much of which is just based on simple principles of reinforcement learning. Now, if that's the case, and those are some of the most effective treatments, we need to begin to understand um, how learning systems in the brain may go awry in development in these children. And so here at Cornell, we've begun to focus our studies on genes that are specific to uh, learning and development, because this is a neurodevelopmental disorder, and we're really trying to help these children learn in a, in a different way in a, and learn to communicate in a different way. So if you have um, a genetic alteration that's going to lead to you learning about your world in a different way, uh, we can use that information when we discover those genes in terms of getting you then to learn in ways in which your genetic makeup is going to help you actually um, be able to learn quicker. So you don't, want to, you don't want to use systems that don't seem to be functioning as well. You want to sort of know what systems the child can use. So I think that the research at Cornell really emphasizes trying to understand the biology of the treatments that do work. And these have all been really behavioral in nature with the medications that we use with this disorder um, being ones to sort of help take care of other aspects of autism with um, anxiety, outburst, um, not being able to deal with novelty and the sort and taking the edge off there to allow them to feel more comfortable.